Nerd Soul. Oh yeah, lay ill kid at one youngster. Hold it down, bringing that streak into Nerd Soul. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. We got One Nation up in here and some comics, black comics doing our thing. And right in front of you, you have the man, the myth, the legend, Jason Reeves. What's up? Oh, hi. I didn't notice you guys there again. Um, <laughs> just doing some fake reading of my own books here. Um, how is everyone? <laughs> man look we out here chilling getting into issue number four of one nation now you got the you got the you know got the cover up in front of us black lives matter you know it's mm-hmm. it's all about the it's all about the you know the protest the revolution you know the the rebellion if you win the uprising um but before we get into issue four there might be somebody brand new uh real quick what is one nation uh, One Nation is about our main character, Paragon. Um, he's the first superhero on Earth, and he's figuring out the way the world works. Um, he's, he's being bombarded by people trying to uh, use him for their own purposes. They're not even concerned with his own purposes, but he really wants to help people. He really wants to save people. It's in his nature to be a good guy. And uh, he's just stumbled onto turmoil in uh, Los Angeles because of the riots. Uh, and he's also come under the radar of the 10th Foundation, a group of superheroes who are philanthropic in nature. Okay, okay. So, uh, like he said, they out there in the streets, man. It's getting wild because the 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 whole protest, the uprising, the riots, they've started. We're in the middle of the LA riots right now. And mm-hmm. uh something that's uh interesting about this particular issue is because since we're coming from three where the riots are beginning and now we're kind of like in the thick of it, uh you start out with a quote from Joel Anderson. Uh mm-hmm. and it says there was a lot of sen- senseless chaos, senseless death, senseless destruction among some people not everybody there were some opportunists among the crowd but at the head of it there was a real sense of purpose for what people were doing and getting out to the streets and saying we've had enough of this um in this in this series at this moment what is the this that people have had enough of please be kind it and it it's being, shown being treated like second class citizens um as if uh the black people were and the minorities were animals or less than human in any endeavor that they sh- that the police show up to you know either curtail or supposedly to uh bring safety to uh, and the the issues go a long way to show the effects like the imagery you have like the gas station on fire you know the people in the last issue in issue three at the uh at the like the shopping market at the like the grocery store or whatever you know we we get these images that show that you know they they are responding because you know like they say is there's nothing else that we can do you know we're tired of this we've had enough and we open up on um uh i guess thrice continuing her kind of mind telepathic link yes and we see um i believe her name is indira yeah um indira is in the middle of essentially like she's in a kill zone basically because the um if people remember kind of what was going on through the at the LA riots, or if people, if you you might have been too young, there was um a specific store. Well, this is kind of before the LA riots. All right, there's there was this young lady that was, you know, killed by a shop owner. Um, Latasha. Uh, and uh, what's her last name again? Sorry. Latasha Harlins. Oh, okay. So they they're kind of pulling on that too because this stuff is all kind of leading up to there's the Rodney King there's all all of this kind of leading up coming to a head 
And at this store, you have these people, shop owners, with their guns, and they're like, essentially kind of like in sniper positions over these folks that are down, which would be a kill zone if you were in the military. You know, they're, they're sniping down on you. You're all down there. You have no weapons of your own. Or you have no weapons that are comparable to theirs. And Indira comes through and basically, you know, I guess dissuades them from shooting <laughs> in her own special way. Uh, with fire and thorns, but she gets it. She gets it across really quickly. Like, hey, look, I said put the guns away, but she she said it with a little more strength. <laughs> with a oh. chip. Yeah, she definitely did. When when you're writing this scene, was this something that you knew you were going to put in there, or is this something that you were saying, or or that kind of like added later, or someone said maybe you should add this? Um, I was reading up, you know, I was doing you know, more research about the riots because I didn't live in California at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just reading up on like different events that, that took place. And this kind of spoke to the Latasha Harvey tragedy, but also there were Korean shop owners who were mobbing up to protect their stores, which I have no issue with, now, right? Like, uh, looters, you know, people who were riot, quote unquote, rioting. I like to tend to think it was an uprising. Um, and especially in my research, uh, reading up on and watching like the podcast that Joe Anderson did about the riots, sort of a retrospective. Mm-hmm. Um, they were caught, that's why this issue is titled uh, Riot versus Uprising. Because, again, people call it the riots, but was that really uh, what it was? Riots tend, the riot tends to make you think that people are being unreasonable. In yeah, their like they're like they're just wilding for fun. Like they're just being wild, and that's not what this was at all. Um, that's why I included Will's quote because it spoke so much to what the issue is. <clears throat> so. Um, so yeah, I was reading up on the Korean store owner, the store owners mobbing up, getting their weapons and, and protecting their shops. And I thought that was such a rich thing to kind of delve into. But also on the flip side of that, you have these other minorities, especially these black folk, have a, a real serious gripe about Latasha being killed. Part of the powder keg of uh, um, Los Angeles at the time, one of the things that, that was lighting the fuse of that was Natasha's murder, right? And she, and let's make no mistake, she was, it, her murder was completely unnecessary. She was murdered by a Korean shop owner, right? Essentially for nothing. For nothing, for nothing. And um, so I wanted to speak to, you know, those events kind of building on top of each other and and coming to a head here and again you know like i said in our last talk about issue three the the tenth are here to be the line and it, it's a hard line to skirt but you know soon the odd in the tenth are built for them. and and this is to say like these people have these uprisers have a legitimate gripe that's not to say i'm gonna let them loot your stores but I'm not gonna let you kill them, right? Yeah, because not gonna she does say, um, she's when she's talking to the people outside down uh, down on the ground. Uh, she said something like, um, uh, "Everybody be cool." Uh, you know, they they say, you know, they killed Latasha, and she said, "No, it wasn't these people." Please, and it's I see her having the like compassion for them because. No, it wasn't these people per se, but right. you're in this community. They're in this community. They know the type of energy and the attitude that they get from these shop owners because the, hmm, what's the best way to say this? The, the attitude from those types of shop owners 
is not an anomaly. Right. It's not it's not a situation as if, you know, like, oh yeah, it was just that one guy and that was him by himself. No, all the other shop owners right. did completely fine. It's like, no, right. this is we're angry because that was just one of the six or seven or ten shop owners that do this to us all the time. They threaten us or they threaten us with the police or they threaten with the you know what I'm saying? So it's like, no, this person didn't kill Latasha, but this person's I don't know if it because this could it's be a slippery slope, a, but this person's it's culture, ideology. It's a culture of microaggressions and, yeah. and regular aggressions that happen uh because you have these two cultures that are in a lot in, in a lot in the same areas having to interact. And make no mistake, white supremacy is is the is the breeding ground for those two cultures being abrasive toward each other. Mm-hmm. And there's not a lot of time when these interactions happen to have that conversation, okay? So, you know, when we're being intellectuals and we have our intellectual hat on and our understanding hat on, you know, maybe in an interview or, or in some kind of public forum, yeah, we could probably have those discussions. But when you're in a store... And you have a shop your business. You around and you you trying to you know buy them a quarter water or something, <laughs> then you know we're not having those discussions. You know what I'm saying? So uh there is these certain little microaggressive cultures that are happening that it's okay to say them, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh yeah, so there's there there's there's legitimate um actions that are happening in this scene, right? Again, a Korean shop owner did murder Natasha Hill. And it's 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 almost if we're talking up up to this point, it's the last and most aggressive of the microaggressions and aggressions that have been happening. Again, mm-hmm. the city is a powder kid. So that's legit, but it's also legit to protect what you built and what you own. Yeah. That's legit as well. Um, and a, the tenth is the line again. The tenth is there. Uh, Indira knows this, so what what she's doing is saying, "I'm not. We're not doing none of this today." That's not what the problem is. The ultimate problem. That's not why the uprising is happening. So again, to speak to what we were talking about with the situation with Ford outside the uh, mini mall. And the police, like the tenth, are there to make sure nobody dies tonight. Yeah. Um, even in the midst of all this turmoil, that we don't have time to necessarily dissect in the moment, but we're not letting nobody die because we're heroes, and that's what that's what she's saying <laughs> in her in her you know Indira more Indira type way. <laughs> Man, I love how she said. <laughs> She was like, all right, everybody calm. Did she turn around and was like, and you, I said, <laughs> yo, Indira and Ford, man, they, they're hilarious. Listen. Man, Ford was like, God, here they come. All right, look, <laughs> y'all got to chill. So I, I, I had a conversation with one of my elders a while back. And, you know, often you talk to elders and you talk about, like, revolution and uprising or mm-hmm. what. Uh, black folk need to do as far as civil rights goes and, and how it has endured or changed over the course of like these years and uh, you know I'm way younger than the cat I was talking to this is an elderly cat and he was like cause, so he's been there he was there at like civil rights like March on Washington oh, okay. and uh, he was telling he was like yeah man I just you know I often the cats be like, man, these young dudes, man, y'all young dudes, y'all crazy. Why y'all out there killing each other? Blah blah blah. But this, 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 thankfully, this elder was way more understanding of nuance. And he and I was, I, we were back and forth, and we had the same ideas. I was like, yo, we have, uh, our culture has soldiers, like the cats that you see on the street that's ready to pop off at any second. Those are our warrior cats. They're more inclined to violence because they're our warrior class, right? 
We have intellectuals, we have educators, we have athletes, we have artisans and musicians, but then we, in, in our sort of modern society, we don't pay respect to our warrior class unless it's, unless you join the military, right? Mm, but within the black culture, there's sort of a subversive antagonism to our warrior class. And I'm not saying it's right for us to kill each other. I hate that. I don't want that. But at the same time, I'm saying your inclination to be able to do so, to be able to go to war, is something that could possibly be cultivated within our culture um, and directed positively somewhere else or for some other uh, intention. And he and I were going back and forth and talking about it. And I was saying, that's why as I grew, as I'm growing into an older man, um, I am, I start to understand more about those cats and they, and, and the idea that they should be directed more positively. Like I think about the fruit of Islam and how the nation of Islam takes that warrior class and trains them into a protective measure. Right, like we saw in the Spike Lee uh, Malcolm X, when Malcolm X is, is is going to get that brother out of police custody and mm-hmm. into a hospital because he's beat up, he's hurt, and the, the police are like, "Y'all better get out of here. You better get him. You better get out of here." And the fruit of Islam is is, is behind Malcolm yep. X. Like, if it's gonna pop off, it's gonna. We're ready for it to pop off. That's what I mean when I say. Our warrior class is out in the streets. They bout that gunplay, but they can be directed more positively. And Sunniata knows this. And who's his warrior class? Indira and Ford. Yeah. So that's what that speaks to. Definitely. Um, and and extremely well. But you know, our, our boy Paragon, he in this issue. You know, he up in here. Paragon, he 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 um he he actually gets a he he gets a little fight a, a slight fight <laughs> and I want well I mean there was some guys shooting guns and he won't trip it on there he was like shit uh, aside from One Nation the Gauntlet we have not unleashed the power that is Paragon but no it is yeah so he got he got a little story fight. here yeah he got a little fight in this one which mm-hmm. is where my question comes from. He fights this guy that kind of comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Is he a powered person? Because I mean, I guess so. He made him hurt, but even Paragon was wondering, like, does this guy have powers or is he just like a really strong human? Because he got so, hit and he said it hurt. It hurt. Can no normal person hurt that? That's all. I'm okay. So this dude, this <laughs> random, so uh, Swole so John B see, is <laughs> Swole John B. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. That's, that's um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. There's, there's, a, there's a part of the scene where the guy swoops in and hits Paragon, right? Mm-hmm. And then you see the, the, the sort of X-ray of Paragon skeleton. Mm-hmm. And where he's saying it hurts. I haven't been hurt like this, like ever. Well, you, you're looking through the eyes of the guy hitting him. Ah, I thought that was that just is, us getting a, a shot of like what so it hurt on him. You're, you're looking through the eyes of this mysterious perpetrator. Ah, okay, okay. So this guy is able to see, like I guess you know, weaker points or something like that, or pressure points so or something. Be, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, um, who's the? I can't remember. There's an inhuman that can see like weak points and things. I can't remember, but the humans uh, largely are kind of whack. So, like, it's yeah, funny. I said it. I don't care who's. I don't care who's mad about it. the inhumans are like. I don't even. They just. I mean, I guess they could be cool, but like they, they're whack. Even when they had yeah. Joe Mad drawing for them, they were still whack. Like, come on, man. Like, what was y'all yeah. doing? They are a little rough. But the guy you're talking about is Karnak. Who? Karnak. Oh, yeah, Karnak. Okay, cool. Yeah. He can see weak points in any. Very, so, very similar thing happening in this scene. So, 
he he gets into this fight and he gets checked he's like oh hold up hold up now it's almost like one of the situations like no you didn't try to embarrass me and then he turned around and like whoop him up real quick he like hold on hold, hold, hold. all right hold on now hold, let's not get too happy it's like yes you got you got me with some good shots but you you know you sucker punch me so let me let me go and whoop you up real quick <laughs> right right and it does give us a chance to like uh look back at the gauntlet because he even wonders if this is related to what he went through because he says i haven't been hurt like this in saudi arabia where they kind of like put him through this well through this gauntlet of like i guess tricks or tips and tricks to try to take down a superhero right 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 if you, so, if you remember uh, uh evers used uh cleverly too uh nick striptus which is basically you know shorthand kryptonite uh, for caramats yeah. uh he used that to weaken paragon in an effort to, to try to kill him uh, with these mercenaries and that is literally the only time paragon has ever like, felt pain mm. and he was weak <laughs> So he feels pain, and then he's immediately like, "You're not human, are you?" So I don't need to hold back. Homie suplexes the <laughs> heck out of this dude. <laughs> it's mad property damage. Somebody's Hummer get towed up, and I'm pretty yeah. sure they couldn't call like State Farm and be like, "All right, there was these superheroes fighting." They ain't trying to hear that. They ain't trying to hear that. They'd be like, "Nope, it's not covered. We don't care." Like, I got video. I don't care, man. I, look, we, you don't have hero coverage. I mean, look, these cats. If, if you if you kind of notice, these cats are having like a shootout. <laughs> so, Barry got stepping in to stop a shootout during this crazy night of of uprising, and uh, he gets an ambush. So, no, they can't call state for You know, where, where did these these uh, hoodlums, these street toughs, get this hummer from in the first place. Mm. <laughs> Wait, who who let you have Um, uh, my last question on this guy, he says mm. he says almost almost a, a a word before he gets knocked out. Um, mm. he says like Kate mm -hmm. is that? Was he trying to say something, or or maybe or is that a spoiler? Maybe I should leave. Okay, it's mysteries, Mike. Uh, it's, it's mysteries. Come here. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to figure out it's things. I'm mysteries, to... but you, it, and you're supposed to try to figure it out. But keep, keep, keep reading. Keep reading, guys. It's mysteries. It's foreshadowing. Uh, once again, before we move on from this scene, I will say, his suit is dope. I mean, it's the American flag, so it's like, uh, but it is dope. I mean, you know, I mean, you know how we look at the flag. It's like, hey, yay, <laughs> it's like, um, yay. Yeah. I mean, but I, I get I get weirded out now when I see people like people drive these big trucks around here with like eight American flags hanging from them, and I'd be like, you you know who these cats are, and you'd be like, yeah, it's like whenever you see the the truck up on like the the lift and and they got the flags, it's you you know the deal. It's almost like a damn monster truck with like yeah flags on the front and big flags in the back and flag license plate like come on it's like yeah when when you super US stayed out like oh you, you know you know I always I always tell Kimmy I'm always like they go to the real Americans right there <laughs> the real Americans they're not like the <sighs> because you know when whenever someone says a real American you know what they mean right do like, yeah. we know what they mean. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's hilarious to me, but also, like, I'm always of a mind, like, you know, if you're born in America, you're American, right? <laughs> like, it's real yeah. simple. It's not that hard, uh, you know, uh, uh, not leaving being naturalized off the table. That's a thing, too. But it's, it's real easy. It's easy to be an American if you're born here. I don't know why we gotta advertise so hard, but okay. Good job. Ah oh, man. All right. So we get a we get a dope cameo in this book too. Mm -hmm. Issue four, we get a cameo. Oh yeah. That's right. 
<laughs> Gotta do the right thing, y'all. <laughs> you saw that. You got, saw that's, that's my old heads. You know what I'm saying? Gotta do the right thing, y'all. You gotta do the right thing. When you when you get to that page, you're gonna be like, oh snap. Nice little cameo. John Carlo Esposito that made a, you know, yeah, made a cameo in the man. book. If if I if I had my first choice of anybody to play some theater, I would I would give him. Like if I had uh, my brother, uh, I would love him to see yeah. I, I love that dude. That's my man. Big brother almighty. Hey. That's right. But um we get we get I I guess you could say hmm, maybe maybe uh a, a, a focus, a highlight on Sudiata here. Because mm-hmm. finally we get the message that he speaks out to and you know he is ready. And of course, you know, we have the mind link. So he's able to speak to like everyone right now. And he gives this rousing speech and gets everybody to head towards um, uh, towards the city hall. Um, yeah. Or is it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, basically city hall. Yeah, so, basically. It's, it's, the, um, it's the center. So he's Parts like, look, after outrage, after action, you know, is it, so he's. He's like, hey, look, there's, you know, peace will only show its face, you know, after outrage, after action, after the fight. So, you know, he's putting out a message that's like, look, hey, we don't mind peace. Peace is awesome. But the only way you're going to get peace is after doing this. And him leading it in this way, being very, very public, very out front is something that sort of worries me a little bit but I mean also at the same time he got a team so you know how it is man whenever you got someone who like ain't you know they ain't you know chucking and jiving you, you be like oh man I don't, he ain't gonna be around long but no good goes in punishment <laughs> so I mean <laughs> say you know should we head to park center and everybody's you know like thrice is really to, to move the minds of a whole city like even to like nudge them, that's a mm-hmm. huge deal. It's a big deal. Like, like this is crazy for the whole <laughs> city. And you know, justice for Rodney. Everybody heads there. And mm-hmm. for the larger, larger context is now that Sundiata is becoming sort of like the the voice of of the the unheard the voice of the the resistance the voice of the rebellion the voice of the uprising and it's it's awesome to see this on page because so many times you know you're watching this and you're voiceless Mm -hmm. you know you don't you're like hey you know i i read this i read these books and you know it's great but you know and and these other books were voiceless that's that's uh intention <laughs> oh. um, you know uh the idea here is this organization again i keep throwing around the word philanthropic and they're really trying to give back um with great power comes great responsibility you know i mean i i really love that mantra um true that, true that. Like, like you said like in if, even if we're talking in terms of Christ being able to talk to everybody in their minds in LA, like that's a lot of people, especially that were out on the streets that night. And mm-hmm. these people do have great power. And then I want I, I want our audience to know they're responsible. They're trying to be responsible with it. Um, they're trying to be thoughtful um, and, and curtail this situation. That could pretend people can get killed and harmed and, and, and destruction is happening or can happen. Um, they're trying to mitigate that by using their power. They're, they're trying to be responsible. So, yeah, man, Suniyad is the man with the plan, man. He, he, he got a plan. Yeah, he, he's definitely working it here because, you know, people head to the park center. And at first, it's kind of like, hey, we want a retrial now. You know, we, we want justice for Rodney. And of course, you know, you got the, the riot cops and you know how you know how they do. They I mean, bro, I mean, come come on. You know they ain't put all that stuff on for nothing. They wanna they wanna hurt somebody. 
and they're, they're coming out there again, like like we talked about with the situation before the minimo. Like, there's a way to de-escalate things without exacerbating them, and it's like, man, why do we always have to choose the violence? So, yeah, always. Um, but and, and in this instance. We, a lot. we still have help. We still we still have help. We still have help from the tenth, and we have help from Paragon. <laughs> Paragon <laughs> comes in. He got the full cape. He got the he got the the eagle on his chest. He comes down, but unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, because the cops the cops are starting to shoot people, you know, beat up people, you know, all that stuff, all the police brutality that you expect at any kind of like you know public gathering, spraying people, all that stuff. So, of course. He does say, how does this solve our problems? Cops stomping around, brutalizing people like Nazis. All right. So he does say that. And he says, we're supposed to be protecting these people. Because, I mean, of course, P, he still think that, like, we the good guy. Like, y'all ain't the good guy. But then, oh, man, this man said everyone needs to go home. Oh, man. Why why you do me like that, Paragon? Why you do me like that? You man, you wanna you, love him, but sometimes he's not lovable. I was rooting for you. Like <laughs> you were the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, like he says, can any one of you tell me how this is gonna make things right? And I get what you're saying. But then someone could fire back and say, how does staying at home make things right? How does going home make things right? How does voting make things right? Because we've been voting for how many years now? And it's still not right. So do you propose that we do nothing, sir? Now, obviously, the audience does not. The, the uprisers do not say that. They say other things. Man, they call him a puppet. And someone, one dude says, shut up, white boy. Oh man, that's yo. That's the funniest part of the whole book. They told they said, "Shut up, white boy." And the funny thing is, we we talked about this a little bit before, where it's like he's like, "Yo, man, I ain't white." I mean, he didn't say that, but I'm like, I'm like, yo, he's not white, but it's like I get. He was, he was, he was visibly confused. <laughs> like, like we were just talking about them trucks. If I'm driving down the street, and I'm in Virginia, so if I'm driving down the street, down the street, and I see those lifted trucks with the Confederate flag, I'm like, "There's a white dude in there." Now, if a black dude jump out, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> and, and, and so, a little context here: he's completely clothed, yeah, from head to toe in the American flag and in, in, in American icon, iconic iconography but you can't see yeah you can't see his face because he always distorts his, his face. powers um his halo disrupts um uh electronics depending on how close or how intense the halo is at that time so you can't really see what he looks like you and i know like yeah audience wise we know he's black because we've been reading the story but Contextually, no one knows he's black. Yeah, and and I like this conversation that you have. And I'll, I'll say this, and then I want to get your perspective. He he says, "Hold up." He says, "Look, none of this is going to change the way things work." Now, I think these people would like to disagree. I think the people <laughs> in the civil rights movement would like to disagree. Yep. This actually did change the way things work now of course we can get into the nuances of how all it did is make ws use different routes to do the same things they were doing but at least it did change some stuff the way it worked at least they had to they had to come up with new ways to do old stuff (laughs) so they had to they had to work for it so him you know him saying like none of this is going to change the way things work it's like, uh, I don't know, but Sundiata comes in. So why why did you have Sundiata come in at this moment? 
<laughs> ain't it the best moment? It's the grand <laughs> moment. It's the crescendo, Mike. Um, <laughs> uh, Sundiata is again. I keep saying this. Sundiata is the line. You know, maybe Sundiata is the line of nuance between uprising and riots. Right? Mm-hmm. He's he's there to say Indira Ford, Sundiata Thrice. Stronghold, they're there. They're the line of nuance here. And uh, let me stop you right there, Paragon. Let me draw a line in the sand in front of you and say, this is exactly how it works, is what he says. This is exactly how we change the way things work. Let me inform you, you ignorant <laughs> son of a, you know? Like, come um, here, young brother. Yeah. And, and, that's what that's what older cats are supposed to do for the young brothers, right? So, true, true uh, I think that moment in my mind, what I'm trying to convey there, uh, Sundiata says it all. Like, you think something, but that's not necessarily how what what you think does not necessarily mean that that's the way that it works. This is exactly the way we do things. Suniata is telling y'all, man. Y'all, y'all need to read this, man. Suniata is telling y'all the way I'm doing it. That's the way it's gonna work. And then we we see on the other side the tenth just rebuilding. You know, mm-hmm. strong uh, strongholds like lifting beams. You got Ford like you know, kind of like directing traffic around for the firemen and stuff. You got Mahout in the background helping lift lift other beams and stuff, and it. So it shows like we're not just here protecting the people and making sure that nobody does anything that they're going to regret, you know, next week or something like that. But we're also here making sure that these people can come back and kind of like resettle. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it very publicly too. Yeah. And that's what I like about the other side of this this, uh, book where we get very a very public response you know you get um you get what the news is saying you get uh you know kind of like speeches from sudiata you know he says here we are heroes and sinners all black white latino asian and everything in between and you know he's you know kind of at the forefront he's definitely this is kind of like the tenth i guess you could say first real big like coming out party yeah, it's still coming out for it's, it's, That's exactly what it is. And he said, you know, in the, in the face of extreme iniquity, like the outcome of the Rodney King trial, that bond is intensified. Talking about like them, you know, we all have a common bond. It's like we got, we all have something to fight for. And it's, look, man, I love the way this book ends. It, I mean, because you see, you know, he's speaking he's not really speaking just to LA he's speaking to the world right now Mm -hmm. and I think that he also knows that Um, and I just like the way we we kind of highlight you know people in Detroit people in New York people you know you know even in jail you know people that were like listening to this man and understanding where he was coming from and of course we got we you know we got the words retrial now over and over so this is this is something that i think is something that comics need to do more of and some comics do very well how important was it for you to make sure that there was like a i guess sort of like a journalistic angle or like a news like a public news kind of like angle to it to kind of see the way the world was responding to this to sudiata to the tent things of that nature um, so because it is sort of their coming out party, um, it's important for us as, as the readers to see, like, uh, this is not just happening, um, in a microcosm, like yeah. the same way it, it's sort of, so this in this book, book four ends arc one. Um, so we started the arc, One Nation Issue One, Paragon that's his coming out party. The world sees the first person they've ever seen with the ability to carry a helicopter over their head. Mm-hmm. And 
it's sort of sort of taking that to this other other degree now in issue four here this is the tenth the extension almost of superhumans coming their coming out party and we're seeing now they're also on the world stage so now we're not only having to deal with one hair man we're dealing with several yeah and they're here what is the several that we several that we can't control because right. we're we're just barely controlling the one we got. Right, right. So what is what is the world? So if if there was a cliffhanger in this book, what is the world gonna do with a whole foundation of these cats? And at this moment, in this world, the heroes that we know of aren't aren't the heroes that that we want to see. <laughs> I mean, outside of Paragon, because we don't know what he looked like. Uh-huh. Right. So we, we see we see a, a a black dude with gray dreads. In, we ain't, in a we vest. ain't feeling that, <laughs> especially when he coming I out mean, here telling us about ourselves. We ain't we ain't hearing that. Well, I don't know about the whole the the we in the scope of the rest of the world. Oh the yeah, sorry. The, the we I mean but, is but, but the we. In in uh, our representative of the U.S. government here, uh, yeah. General Baker, that we is very skeptical. <laughs> yeah, extremely, um, right. because we end this we end this issue with General Baker, with of course the uh, the shade in the rock, where he's saying, you know, he's, I mean, he's not happy that this speech has been playing. He even says he's been playing on the on TV for two weeks. People, people, ready for a change. Two weeks they've been playing the same speech. Then he said he's on the cover of Age magazine. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yo, everybody know Age. You know what I'm saying? Age magazine is our Time magazine. Yep. <laughs> um, but he's, you know, he said you should have stayed on and got a photo photo out with the mayor. Um, and of course, you know, Paragon is like, yo. There were some miscommunications. You know, I can't take all the credit for LA. Sundiata did a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I, you know, I stopped some stuff, but you know, his team did, you know, he said they deserve all the praise. Why? Because Paragon believes that you're actually here to help people. Yes. But you're not. You're here to be our weapon. You're here to let the rest of the world know that the US government has this and y'all ain't got it. Okay. And the what really caps this conversation off is when General Baker says there's so called peace foundation. So he ain't feeling none of this at all. And we we know we know he because he ain't got no problem with peace. Cause he always talk about peace when 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 the US government is bringing peace. When it's, when it's our piece that we made that we get to say was peace yeah so and then he talks about you know uh, some of us around here are a bit nervous <laughs> nervous right. about what us, baby. Want peace. don't you want peace I want peace you want peace everybody want a peace yeah everybody <laughs> want peace what's the big deal um, but this, uh, this the end of this uh, book really defines not only let that line that you were talking about but also you know the line with Sudiata but it also seems like now there's a line with Paragon and the US government because mm-hmm. Paragon I mean even though he's he's very optimistic about very optimistic about the US government he was a kid too remember he was yeah, a kid yeah, he, he this is, is this what he's early, 19 or something like that early 20s yeah oh he's, he's uh, because I, cause I remember he had joined, so I'm assuming he's like eh, 19, this 20, is, something like that. This is almost not even two two years later from when he joined up. So oh, okay, and he was like 18, 19 when he joined up. So this is like so, a yeah. 21 year old kid. Cool. So understood. So you know, he said, you know, he still said you're our golden boy, but this Sundiata character is an enigma. Mm-hmm. 
Is he? No dishonest. Uh, you know, we just don't know. <laughs> we don't know what he has. <laughs> You know, I think he makes some good points here, though, at the same time. Like, put yourself in his shoes, in the shoes of a person supposedly protecting the country. You know, I mean, where did these people come from? They're very powerful. Okay, from a, from a military man's perspective, there, I didn't know that there were other people with powers like yours mm-hmm. that are independent. <laughs> and rough. we don't have because I don't even know if you can beat them I don't know what your limits are so say if they go crazy I don't know if you can stop them and if you can't stop them how are we supposed to stop them because if he's a military man that I will give him that that is what he's thinking you know and what are their powers what you know do do they have I, powers to to imitate someone else can they shape shift can they, I don't know what they can do right that nobody, they don't. He doesn't know what soon the You know do. how the U.S. military does with things they don't know. They just shoot at. We him. just know he shows up where he's needed, right? Like they don't know what soon the can do. He can teleport. They don't know what soon the can do. They don't know that Christ nudged these people. They yeah. don't know. Uh, you know, they had. They don't. Have, they didn't. Other than the camera, other than the news cameras on them. When the news was reporting them re- helping rebuild the city, that's what they know. They don't know what Ford can do. In this report, it's you know, it's the the five second video of them outside this building with with firefighters. So yeah, I mean, of course, at this point now, I'm sure they're trying to figure it out. But at the time of this conversation, he's right. They are a total enigma. And they've been in LA doing whatever they wanted to under the radar of General Baker. <laughs> so someone's gonna have to pay for that. Uh, somebody and, getting in trouble. Somebody. Yeah. So right, there's gonna be a talking to because we, <laughs> you know, we we do talk after you know after Paragon leaves, we get our conversation. With the shade and the rock, and you you see General Baker kind of like reporting in, and it's on some like look. When, even one of the guys says, "A rebuke may be in order for our golden boy." Hey. So you know what that means. They probably about to engineer some stuff where he's gonna be the bad guy, and they can all disavow knowledge or disavow like we, you know, we we thought we could trust him, but. He was just a bad guy or whatever. And then, but unfortunately, you know, that's kind of what you have to deal with sometimes when you, when you join up with these kind of people and you think that you are their friend or they are their, your friend. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hard lesson to learn, but. What's chilling to me about this scene and any scene involving Evers or the Shady Rock is that. Even Paragon, who's a soldier who literally has worked for, like he, he's been he's been discharged at this point, but like like his alter ego doesn't work for him anymore. But uh, he doesn't know that the Shade Naraki exists. <laughs> he doesn't know that there are these people that are cataloging, investigating. And, and, and trying to figure out how to manipulate him mm. and, 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 and the wider world, you know? Yeah, because like, he only knows about General Baker. General Baker is a five-star general in the United States Army, and these people are telling him what to do. This ain't, yeah. this ain't like the president. Yeah. There's something None of else. Them, they ain't no senators. They ain't no governors. They ain't they no what the no hell congressmen or women or nothing. Right. So these people are some Illuminati type stuff. Hey, and hey. Who knows? Cat Williams is very wary of these cats right now. Yo, man. <laughs> Cat Williams would be like, look, I don't mess with these dudes. You know what I'm saying? They out here stealing jokes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they out here acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? Out here getting roles in Hollywood, mad easy. Jaden the Rock keep inviting Cat Williams to parties and he can turn them down. Yep, you know now what I'm saying? He, he go to the party, but he don't never, he turned down a job in the Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, he, they like they like Puff Daddy, man. They like the party. 
They like the party. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell them no. So, you know so to saying? me, that's that's what's chilling about it. If I'm a reader, I mean, I know. Uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as the audience, what would be chilling to me is the fact that who are these dudes with this tech that can just kind of show up in your office, right? Like, that's weird. In 1992, that we have this kind of holographic tech. Right, yeah, you can just, you can just, you know, show up anytime, turn it on. What's generating this? What, you know, so they yeah. definitely have access far and above what you know even the u.s military is probably dealing with at this time but general baker like you said you know he's he knows that they're always you know it says digitizing and he just says what do you think so he's always in contact with these people so this is definitely on some kind of like subversive you know second government type stuff where you know you can't really trust any government agent at this point because you don't know who's bought by who or who's aligned with who and you know and how how are they even aligned how did they yeah happen? like how what is their what is their allegiance five star to? general in their pocket yeah because they you know he says you know his mere presence upsets our instruments and scanning devices especially when he gets agitated so that means that they've been, you know, pretty much, I guess, kind of categorizing, studying and lab resulting anything they could possibly get off of Paragon. Because, of course, mm-hmm. they want to know who he is. They're trying to track him. And now that's one thing that Paragon does know. Paragon is like, I know they're trying to figure out who I am. He he like, how, but, he's, he's not. He doesn't know how deep it is. I, I will. Yeah, reveal. He, he definitely don't know that. I will reveal a story point that we haven't elaborated on. We might go into it later. I will say this. Keep in mind, the suit he's wearing, they gave it to him. Yeah. Because that's he's another... Wearing. Yeah, because that's one thing I was like, uh, is there like a tracker on there? Or something? Or something that's like, I mean, how do we know that can't poison him or shut him down when they, like... who? You know, who knows, but... So, here's what they say here. We anticipated he'd be able to glean... We anticipated we'd be able to glean his identity from the suit you presented him with, but our text can't get any readable telemetry. So, they're, scan- they're constantly scanning him when he's wearing this thing. Mm. It's just that, you know, again, his, his halo upsets instruments. Um, so... They haven't been able to figure out who he is, but they tried, and that's that's some hard, that's some invasive trying, <laughs> you know. Yeah. If somebody gave you, if somebody gave your watch as a gift, but that watch tracked your wherever you went, and if you wore it, it scanned your body. Yeah. Like that's invasive, you know. So, uh, you know, even my man don't know how deep it's going, or. or, or or it's gonna get. And so I give you, I'll give you all that. And he even says, "I know they're watching my, the, the I know they're watching me, and I can mm-hmm. read the satellites repositioning as I cross the sky." So mm-hmm. that's crazy that he yeah. can even he can see that, or he can feel that, or he can like decipher that. Right. If you if you he he talks about it earlier in the issue too. Um, he calls it his spectra vision. And he can literally read information in his energy form. Um, uh, radio waves. Like, that's how he knows what the police reports are saying when he's swooping down on these uh, uh, gangbanger types. Because he can, he can pull it out of the air. Um... That's part of his power set, part of his halo. But I, I will say this: this issue ends with us knowing we're starting to we're starting to get into our camps and draw lines because he says they don't trust me, but I don't trust them either. Right. Um. So now it's we're firmly in the kind of 
we're starting to turn away from one another. But this issue doesn't end just with that. You give us a nugget. Give us a little baby nugget before we leave. Little baby, little baby move. Little baby move. What is, I guess, in short, what is Project Mid or Not? Because it's operational now. It is. It's just operational. All right, cool. Then I'll ask this. It's code 002854. Is there any significance to that number? Because I've Googled it a couple of times trying to figure out if it means something. <laughs> look at me. Look, man. I Look. I be trying to figure out things. I can't things. tell you what it means. I can't tell you any of them. I'm like, I'm like, all right, it's, I'm like, it's not a date. I'm like, I'm all right. Not, I, I can't, I can't tell you. All right, cool. Well, look, um, Project Mid or Not, okay. because it's it's referenced in like issue one? No. It's referenced before. I think it's referenced in issue one. I think. But they reference it in a way basically saying, hey, that's something that Nazis was doing a long time ago and you know it's over or whatever. That's issue three. Oh, issue three. So, you know, it is referenced, but it's so referenced you, in a way where it's like, oh, that's some old stuff. You know, Nazis were doing something wild. Yeah. yeah. And apparently I, you, um, I, I gave you the only nugget that I could give you with Paragon Spectre Vision, I cannot reveal what Project Midanak is or is. All right, so well, I'll say it. this. I'll say this. He looked serious. And whenever there's some kind of mean looking dude that's in a vat of water, like, you know, it's about to be real. And I'm gonna say that this is I what I even know who, I don't even know who controls this guy or this being or this robot or whatever because the Nazis is gone. And this less, is what I will say. Mm-hmm. We use color a lot to tell the story in one nation. Okay, so okay. similar colors might point out some stuff. If you if you go to Paragon, it, whenever you see him using his spectral vision you'll see that the color of the caption changes. It looks like spectral vision, right? So on, uh, what page is this? This is like page one, two, three, four, five. Page six, when Paragon swoops in, you see it says, all available units, we have a report of gang shootout on Mark Street for single culture. That's him using his spectral vision. That's rattling off in his head. He can see the radio waves. <clears throat> um, so keep in mind, and, and if you notice, those colors are very similar to his halo colors, to his costume colors. Blah, blah, blah. So again, on this page, the last, the cliffhanger, a lot of green going on there. That's all I'll say. Yeah, did that. All right, I'll, I'll have to do, get on my, my thinking hat. <laughs> my investigation on. Yeah, keep keep looking stuff up. Keep 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 looking. Keep trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Audience I'm, I'm, members, readers, figure it out. I we tell stories in a very subversive kind of way here at One Nation and at One Two Three R. And uh, we drop it hints for you. you. Just gotta you gotta find them. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, with that said, I want to say thank you. For rolling through talking some issue four with us you know one nation man that whole arc it's flames so um Thank you. uh everybody the hardcover will be dropping um <laughs> no, I was just like, I, it's we wish for it's thinking coming. wish for thinking it's but coming. um i'm gonna throw oh where oh okay oh all right. I, don't, I don't have a date for you but it's coming all right so, I'm, I'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw it to you real quick uh Final thoughts, and of course, where can people find you? Um, man, look, follow the clues. <laughs> follow yeah, the clues. Man. Read back through arc one. It's a six issue arc. Follow the clues. The, the reason those books are, are in book one, One Nation One through Four, One Nation The Gauntlet, and One Nation Safe House, it's all connected. It's all connected. Um, so follow the clues. But, um, 
yeah, you can you can find us. You can get One Nation Alkaline at our hub, 133art.com, or at our sister stores on uh, Facebook, IG, and TikTok. Um, ordered up. People have been ordering them. We sent them right to your house. Uh, you can get them digitally as well. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, 133art. Publishing man, one two three art dot com. Come see us. Come read this book, man. This is my baby. This is my love. This is my first look. I love One Nation. I get excited talking about One Nation because I think it's gonna happen. It's gonna make it. Yo, that's what's up. This what's up. So, of course. N-E-R-D, S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. And until the next time that the government expects you to trust them, this is just for me to you saying peace. <laughs>